In this video, I'm going to go through a few things about Microsoft Word, which will hopefully be of use to you when you're a student with us. So what will you be using Word for? Well, probably for most of your written assignments. I'm sure you may well have used Word before, but even if you have, I'm going to go through a few things which we often get asked by students when they start using Word for university work. So firstly, a few things about saving and finding your documents. You need to save your documents wisely, so you need to actually think about what you name them. You need to give it a name which will help you know what's in it without having to open each document. So if you just name something assignment, then it's really hard to tell which one it is in a couple of weeks time. So give it a more descriptive name and make sure you save your documents somewhere secure where they'll be backed up, like your OneDrive is a good place or other cloud storage. It's much safer to save it there than on a USB stick and especially if you're using a computer which isn't yours, like one of the university laptops or computers in the library, don't save your documents on the C drive there because then somebody else might move them or delete them and it's just not safe. It's also a good idea to have some folders to keep your documents organized. So you might want a folder called assignments and one called research, or maybe you want a folder for each of the modules that you're studying, just so that you can keep stuff together. You may also want to convert your documents to PDF when you're submitting them. It can help you make the file size smaller. So mostly you can submit written assignments either in Word or in PDF, um, but check the individual assignment brief. So to save your document as PDF, you just go to the file menu and export and the first option is create PDF or XPS so I'm just going to click on the create PDF button and it's going to save this on my desktop you can put it somewhere else wherever you want it's got the same file name and it's going to save it as PDF so I will publish it OK, and it opens it in Adobe Acrobat because that's my PDF reader and that's it. And now a couple of things about formatting for assignments. Now styles are actually really useful. <clears throat> so in Word they appear across the top. I'll show you where in a moment. It helps give your document a more professional look, keeps it organized and it makes it more accessible for people with disabilities, which is just a good habit to get into. Right, here is my document that I've put text in already, so it's quicker to show you how to do this. I'm going to apply some styles. So this first bit is going to be my title. So I've just selected the text I want to apply that to, and I'm on the home menu in Word. And then here are all of my styles. So this is my title, so I can just click on that. I think I'm going to make these first couple of words be my main heading. So that's going to be a heading one. And then maybe this next part is going to be my second level heading. Maybe this is a subtopic. So I'm going to make that be heading two. And I can go through here. So this is going to be another heading one. And I'll have a final heading one down here. You can probably see that this text is actually nonsense. It's, it's not real text. So now that I've done all that, if you don't really like what they look like, you can go to the design menu and you can actually choose a different style for the whole document and it will change each of the things you've marked according to what that design has. So I quite like this one with an underlined title. I usually use that. So that's styles. Margins, you may well have changed before. Some assignment briefs actually tell you what size the margins should be, so I'll show you quickly how you can change them. Right, to change the margins in my document, that's going to be on the Layout menu. So I'm going to go to Layout, and the Margins button is on the left. Now I can use one of the preset options if that's what you want. So if you just want to get some more words on the page, you could make them narrow. If you want to make your own decisions about how big they should be, you can go to Custom Margins 
and then you can choose. Now, my computer is set to UK settings, so it's measuring in centimeters. If your computer is set to US settings, it will probably be in inches, um, so you might have to convert. But if I want this to be two centimeters on the left and two centimeters on the right, I can do that and I can change top and bottom as much as I like. And this is going to apply to the whole document. And I'm just going to say OK. And there we go. So my side margins are narrower and my top margin is bigger. Headers, footers and page numbers. So these are the areas at the top or bottom of a document which appear on each page, like in my little example on this slide. It can help your document look professional. It's also good for identifying a printed copy if you've got the document name or your name on it. And some of your assignment briefs will actually ask you to do this. So I'll quickly show you how to do that. So to add page numbers, I need to be on the insert menu and I go to page number in the header and footer group. So I'm going to go to page number and then you can choose where you want it to be on your page. And so if I want it to be in the bottom, in the middle, I've got a few different options of what it will look like. I think I'm going to have plain number two. And so it will put that on the bottom of each page. So right now I'm in the footer. And if I scroll to the top, I can see the header of each page. If I want to put some more things in the header or the footer, I can click in there. But for now, I'm just going to use this close header and footer button. OK, what if I wanted to put something else in the header or the footer? Well, you probably saw it's in the same area. So if I go to the insert menu again, I've got buttons for header and footer. So I can go to header and you can choose a built in one which might have um, the title of the document or your name in it and some different styles. Or you can just go down to edit header. So I can go down to here. So in the header, I might want to put my name. And you might also want to put the document title on the right hand side. Or whatever else you've been asked to put. And when you've finished, um, you can close the header and footer. But first, what if you don't want it on the title page? You can click different first page. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to close my header and footer. And there we go. It's appearing the same on each page. A table of contents is useful for a longer document and it really helps in navigation, in finding which page things are on. And I'll show you how you do those. So to add a table of contents to my document, I need to go to the references tab and I've got the table of contents button over here on the left. But first I need to do some preparation because how Word knows where the sections are in your document is using styles. So I need to have already formatted my document with styles. So what I've already done is I've been on the home menu and you can see if I click in my title, this is the title style. This heading here is heading one. This one is heading two and so on. So I've already made my titles have the heading style and the title style. So having done that, I need to put the mouse where in the document I want this table of contents to appear. So I'm going to make a blank line there, a space, leave the mouse there, then go back to the references tab and click on table of contents. There's a couple of designs I can choose. I think I'm going to choose the second automatic table. OK, there is my table of contents and you can see it's automatically put the page numbers in where each of these titles are. And that's it. Now, if you would like to learn some more about Word, then of course you've got the resources in LinkedIn Learning. This is a really good online training site for all the Microsoft apps and a lot of other things as well. The university has a license for this. So once you're enrolled, you get free access and you can find out how to do that on the student portal. Also, the Microsoft website can help you with some things. They have videos and help guides for most of the apps.